Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. And as you can see, I got quite a few things out here and that's because a good friend of mine, Katie, brought up a really good idea for a video and that's how to properly utilize an animal. And outside of just the meat factor, where we can get our food from animals, I wanted to bring up all of the different things that we can do, whether it's from bone or skin or fur or leather or antler or sinew and tendon, just every single part of the animal you can think of how to utilize that. Before I get started, I wanna reference a lot of the information I have today um, that I've put into practice throughout my life and that I consistently referred to is from the Primitive Technology, a book of earth skills. And this is from the Society of Primitive Technology, which I believe that means they authored it together, edited by David Westcott. I think this is a great book. You can usually find these used pretty cheap, like $10. It's a great uh, book to have and to reference to. So now that I got that done, I wanted to get started. So for my first um, item I want to mention is obviously meat. Elephant in the room, that's what 99% of animals are either hunted or trapped or fish or caught for. Meat's going to be obviously an invaluable resource, but a lot of people miss out on certain portions of the meat. This is ribs right here, which are fairly popular, and then you have like your steak cuts and things like that, but the back straps, the leg muscles, the forearm muscles, those are really going to be your key meats when you're eating wild game, especially wild game that's uh, either later in the season, like towards spring or early fall, that's going to be your safest bet to get meat that doesn't have any sort of parasites or worms in it. So expanding our options on how we view meats is going to be really important. And in wild meats, you're going to really want to look for the back straps, the fore legs, and the hind legs. Those are going to be the meats that you want to stick to. Now, if you're hunting for meat, obviously that's a different story. That's something you can utilize pretty much every single part of the animal for because you're probably hunting during the regular season. And a lot of uh, hunters don't know this or just haven't tried it. The heart, the liver, and the organ meats can be very good for you. They can be very high in minerals and vitamins and things like that. There are certain animals that have organ meat you don't want to eat. Uh, this isn't an example of something that someone would probably eat, but polar bears have a toxic amount of vitamin A in their liver. While that's not an example of an animal you'd probably hunt for food, it's just the first example that came to my mind. So that's always something to keep in mind, but that organ meat is going to be really good to properly utilize an animal and make sure you have as little waste as possible utilizing that organ meat as well as the bone marrow is extremely nutritious and it's been shown throughout history that our ancestors would crack open uh, rib bones and leg bones and stuff and eat the bone marrow and even save it for times of hardship because it would stay good inside the bone so that's another option there for you and that kind of covers meat that's a little bit of a self-explanatory subject but i just wanted to touch on it and now let's move on to bone now bone is one of the most interesting ones to me. Bone has, the ability to work bone has given human beings an evolutionary edge that's just unmatched. And realistically in certain cultures, knowing how to work bone is somewhat more important than knowing how to work stone because there may not be an abundance of nap nappable stone around you, such as in the Arctic, the Inuits use bone knives and bone spears, stuff like that, um, or in the desert, maybe places like that. So to talk about bone, we have a few different options here that I wanna to touch on. So first, taking the bone as a whole, we can look at tools to make out of it. So this is a jawbone. These historically have been used as either throwing clubs or as digging tools or as war clubs. The teeth, can be taken out and used as jewelry or left in um, and if the jawbone is slightly modified if you crack it off here you can use it as a saw to, to notch in or cut sticks in half it's going to be a little slower than a modern saw but it will get the job done so that's an example of a jawbone well, another example uh, with these leg bones is you can split them in half and 
take a piece of sandstone, grind it down, and make bone arrowheads. Bone arrowheads are extremely common. We see them in pretty much every single culture as a pretty common use of bone. I would say probably one of the most common, and then bone knives as well, and bone spears. You can see its bone's gonna have this tendon on it, which is called sinew. That's used to create cordage, just like this artificial sinew braid here that you can use it for tying or looping or lashing or connecting your bone arrowheads and bone knives, wrapping the handles to prevent cracking. Another really common use of bone is in music, um, drumsticks or making flutes, things like that. Bone is very common in music and as we all know, music is an extremely important part of culture and especially primitive cultures. So they were very commonly used for music as well. Another use for bone, you can grind it down and mix it in soups and different dishes for the calcium and the beneficial minerals that are inside of bone. So we got quite a few uses for bone. You can really make any type of tool you can imagine. You can take a scapula and make a gardening hoe. You can take a jawbone and make a club or a saw. With these thigh and leg bones, you can make arrowheads, uh, sewing needles, sewing needles and sewing awls were almost always made out of bone, um, mostly because it's easy to work on a piece of hard grit stone like sandstone, so you can actually grind it down into the shape that you want. Another type of bone, while that may not necessarily be as scientifically accurate, but for the sake of what we're doing, I'm gonna classify it as antler. And antler is really only second to bone in the most useful part of the animal that we see. Antler, you can, see it's got multiple tines here. These tines can be cut off and used for flint napping, for spearheads, ground down for arrowheads. Often they would drill holes if they wanted to make any sort of like a necklace or something like that. They would make jewelry out of these. Not as commonly seen but still done. And this is something a little more modern because it's a more difficult task to accomplish is to make a pipe out of antler. And you can, this is a antler pipe that I made. It does not currently have a stem, but I'm gonna carve one out here pretty soon out of sumac. But you just drill through and just find one that has that natural L shape. You can put a stem in and now you have a pipe. And tobacco and pipes and were extremely important part of either religious ceremonies or just daily life in a lot of prehistoric cultures and still today. Next, I want to talk about horn. Horn is going to be a really important one. It's not necessarily as common, but is still very common. It's used for drinking cups like this. It can be split down and ground up and made into a glue by melting it down similar to a rawhide glue. But generally the purpose of horn we see is mostly either for games or for dining ware, for cups and bowls and things like that. And the nice part about horn is it is fairly malleable. If you heat it up in hot water, you can generally get it to the shape that you're looking for. But a lot of times it was just left like this and known as a drinking horn, popularized probably by one of your guys' favorite shows, Game of Thrones. You're probably gonna see these quite a bit. So there's another use of the animal to make sure we're throwing less away and utilizing more. Next, I wanted to move on to leather. All right, so for leather, we have quite a few different options. We have things like this, which are just regular tanned, commercially tanned leather. You also have brain tan leather which I sadly do not have a piece of right now. Um, however, basically, most animals have enough brain material to tan their own hide. It's a very long, complicated, but unique and interesting process that I plan to do a video on in the future. But again, another example of how you can utilize the whole animal by using its brain to tan its own hide. But for here, we just have a piece of regular buckskin tanned at the tannery so that's you know a million different options right there you can take it and turn it into a bag like this one has been 
And actually the button here is the top of a deer skull that's been cut out to make a, a skull cap button, I guess you could call it. Another option for leather, another bag, a smaller bag, clothing. You can make chaps or moccasins, things like that out of leather, hunting shirts, all almost all Native American clothing and primitive culture clothing was made out of some sort of leather from an ungulate usually. Sticking with the theme of leather, but now going a little farther, we have fur. And fur is gonna be absolutely key for any sort of civilization that sees temperatures 40 degrees Fahrenheit and below. Now with that, you get the insulating property of the fur as well as protection from the elements. So if you're walking in snow or something like that, you're protected from the elements as well as retaining the extra heat that those fibers create by trapping dead air and creating dead air space, which is what creates heat. So with fur, we have boots, jackets, hats, earmuffs, coats, pants, any type of clothing you can imagine, as well as shelter co coverings as well, reindeer huts in the Arctic or buffalo hide, which would be a form of leather um, on the Great Plains, all the way down to um, tan skin, like either reptile skins or different type of amphibian skins in the jungle where they can even take fish skin and make different types of pants or shorts out of it or just a, a basic thong like covering. You can also take leather and you can cut it and make cord out of it and that's one of the more common types of cord outside of our sinew cord that we have here because sinew cord tends to stick to itself like a little bit of a glue and it also tends to it takes a very long time to get a lot of it as compared to leather cord where you can take a whole hide and make about 25 to 30 feet of cord leather cord is going to be essential for tying up your tp lacing your clothing or your boots bow drills things like that creating cookware and moving different types of logs or things like that if you were to make rope out of it so there's an example of leather and fur and what we can utilize the hide for and lastly to condition our leather or um, even the inside of maybe a fur hat or a pair of fur boots is we have rendered down fat which I could call tallow I've heard it called many different things I just tend to call it tallow but I keep mine here in this little tin and you can use this not only to cook with, just like you would with Crisco or something like that, but you can also burn it in a torch or in a lantern type setting. You can use it to condition and protect and also waterproof your leather, either your bags or your clothes and make it last quite a long time. I've seen leather products last 50, 60 years. You can use it to condition horn if you have some sort of horn container like uh, tobacco horn container was very popular back in the day you can condition it with tallow um, you can also make soap out of it by mixing it with lye from your fire pit that's another really common use and pretty ingenious use of animal fat and if you absolutely had to you could eat it if it's stored under the right conditions if it's rendered down properly and it's stored in a cool dry environment you could eat this um, the Native Americans, one popular food is called pemmican, where they would take ground up uh, bison and jerky and mix it with different types of berries and greens and tallow and pack it into little squares and wrap it up in leather and bring it with them out on hunts or on the trail or on war parties. So that's another very common use. Lastly, I wanted to touch on fishing. So you can use sinew to make fishing line. You can use bone and you can splinter it off and make a gorge fishing hook. And basically that works on the concept that you put the bait on the hook and as it goes into the fish's mouth, when you pull on your sinew line, the gorge hook gets stuck in the stomach and that was a very common uh, use of bone for fishing as well as certain cultures in the jungle and on the coast and things like that would use fish skin to make either bandages for bad burns, which is being researched now. I know in Brazil, 
they have a pretty promising study on using fish skins uh, for bad burn victims. But that's another use of just utilizing every single part of the animal. And really, you could sit here all day and talk about the different uses of each body part. What you really need to just understand is the properties and what they do. So for example, with the bone, if you understand how to split it and work bone, you can really make just about anything with it. Granted, it's not gonna be as strong as like a steel item, but you know, it's something you can replicate once you own that skill. And that's what I think is really important when utilizing the whole animal. It's not only showing respect to the animal and respect to the harvest, but practicing our skills in nature and utilizing what we have around us and that creativity and how that affects our brain. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna wrap it up before I ramble too long. I just wanted to take this time to talk about how to properly utilize every single part of the animal. Um, I'm sure there's things I've missed. If you know of things that I missed, please drop them in the comments so other people can see them and I can see them and I would love to see that. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, drop a comment or shoot me a message with different videos you might like to see in the future and I'll see you next time. Thank you.